this is Sarah. Today I'm going to talk about these. So one of the very first things I did in the year 2021 was create the devil horns that I'm wearing right now. Very shortly after creating this artifact, I realized that it would be a excellent way to explain the loft tool in Fusion 360, because without using loft, I don't think it would have been nearly as easy to create this lovely contrapposto S-curve. Loft is a tool in Fusion 360 that allows you to generate a form that morphs from one key face to another. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a few different styles of horns, the qualities of which will be dictated by how I set things up before I open the Loft dialog box. I suggest drawing what you want your horns to look like first so that you have a solid reference for your starting point. All right, let's define a couple of terms that I'm going to use a lot. When I say guide rail, imagine that as the outer contour or general shape of the horn. Also, when I use the term key face, think of that like a cross section of the horn. First off, I'm going to show you how to create some basic Oni style horns. Two key faces, two guide rails on one access plane. I'm going to start off by drawing my key faces first. Each will be drawn in its own sketch. In this case, the two key faces will be the base of the horn and the tip of the horn. I'm going to create a new sketch and select the axis plane I wish to work on. It doesn't matter which, I just need to make sure that I'm consistent within my design. I'll draw the base of my horn first, a larger diamond shape, about 60 millimeters wide. I need to be sure not to constrain the perimeter of the shape to the center axis or to itself. Once done, I'll complete the sketch and create a new sketch selecting the same access plane as I did before. I'm now drawing the second key face, the tip of the horn, a smaller diamond shape that is only a couple of millimeters wide. Once finished, I'll be sure to complete the sketch. Now that I have two key faces drawn on two separate sketches, I can select the outline of the second key face, the tip of the horn, and position it where I want relative to the base of the horn. I do this by selecting the outline of the horn's tip and hitting M to move, then sliding the position of the shape to the correct height. My horns are about 110 millimeters high. So long as my shape isn't snapped or constrained to anything, I can move it up and down freely. Once I've done that, I can define the curve of the horns using a few splines. These lines will represent how the horns look if you're viewing them from the front. Create a new sketch on the Y-plane. The Y-plane is whatever represents the front view of the horn. First, I need to project the points I'll be connecting my splines to. This is the outermost edge of the top and bottom face. I can select them by holding down shift and clicking on them once a little dot appears. Once these four points have been included, I can draw the outline of my horn using the spline tool. I'm going to use the control point spline so that I can tweak the curve once it's drawn. Once I've done this, if I rotate my workspace, I should be able to see the two faces connected by two curves. So long as everything is actually connected, then I'm ready to do the lofting. Next, I'll select loft from the create menu. In the dialog box, I'll add both of my key faces to the face menu. It will automatically bridge straight from one to the other, which isn't what I want, so next I'll need to define some guide rails. I'll click the plus button to add a new rail and then select one of the splines. Then add a second curve for the other. And that's it. I now have a basic Oni horn. To change the look of the horn or tweak it slightly, you can select the sketch of your keyframes and modify them individually. And that's the beauty of using parametric software. So next, I'm going to create a horn with multiple facets and no guide rail curves. Every key face I add to my design will create a facet where my lines will converge. You can think of them as cross sections almost. This is great if you're hoping to produce a geometric appearance or a sharp angle where the horn bends. To do this, I need to repeat much the same process as before. I'll create each of the key faces in its own separate sketch. The shape of the base, a slightly larger middle layer, and lastly, a tiny face for the tip with the same amount of edges as points. And I'll position them on the Y plane by selecting the edges of the face, hitting M, and then moving it to where I would like in 3D space. 
So long as the movement takes place on the same access plane, you can rotate the faces as well as reposition them. Since I'm not creating any curved guide rails for this set, I can go straight into the loft dialog box and connect the base face to the middle face, and then generate a second loft from the middle to the tip. If I want to get a feel for what my horns will look like as a complete set, I can duplicate the body of my horn, then reposition it by pressing M and rotating the body 180 degrees so that it's next to the original. If they look like my original reference sketch, then I win. What if I wanted my horns to have many multiple key faces, but also have a curved profile as well? Starting from my drawing as reference, I would similarly create all of my individual key faces, each in its own sketch. Position them all where I'd like them to appear relative to one another as viewed from the Y-plane. Project the outside edges of each face into a new sketch on the Y-plane. Connect these points together using the spline tool. Make sure all of my splines are in fact connected to the edges of my key faces and then one by one, bridge my key faces together using the loft tool and defining my curves as guide rails. That's pretty much it. So I've since designed and fabricated a bunch of different styles of horns that I can choose to wear to suit my fancy. Each is inspired by the different ways that I've drawn horns in my illustrations lately. And I do have to say that while I have these on, I feel plus 20 mischievous, so if I need a mood modifier or attitude adjustment on a bad day, simply putting these on affects me. And that's kind of a powerful, awesome thing. Love it or hate it, due to quarantine, we haven't been going out and visiting our friends. We haven't been able to recharge our batteries as humans. We haven't been able to have meaningful contact with the people who we care about. And we've had to talk awkwardly to cameras and view people making facial expressions and reacting to the things that we say on a flat screen and it feels very disjointed and defunct but it's all we have right now so we're making the best of it so while i'm trapped in this rectangle this whole space is now an extension of me so i've been adorning it with things that matter to me and these are also a part of that. This is an artifact that I'm going to pick up one day, many years from now, and remember trying to make the best of a very frustrating, challenging situation. I don't know, we can have fun with this too. It doesn't all have to be bad. And again, hopefully it is just temporary, so when it passes, it'll pass and that's it. But while it's here, devil horns, lights, pajamas, really nice pajamas, and lots of coffee, and Zoom conferences with friends. So, until my next video, keep making awesome stuff out there, continue to wear a mask on your face when you go out, and as always, thank you for watching.